Once upon a time, there was a sly young raven who was very selfish and very sneaky. He knew of three treasures that an old man kept safe in his home in three boxes. The first box contained the stars, the second the moon, and the last box contained the sun. The raven wanted these treasures, so he hatched up a plan to take them. The old man had a daughter, and the raven turned itself into a pine needle and fell into the daughter's drink, and she then grew pregnant. When the raven was born as the daughter's baby, the raven cried out for the first box until the old man gave it to him. The raven opened the box and threw the stars up into the sky. He cried for the next box, which held the moon, and once again threw the moon into the sky. When the raven cried for the final box, once he received it, he turned back into a raven and flew away. The townspeople didn't believe the raven had the sun, so to prove them wrong, the raven opened the box and released the sun into the sky. The raven didn't like these skeptical townsfolk, so he turned them into rocks and created new people out of leaves. This new tribe was to be called the Clinket tribe, and that is where our story begins. The Clinket people were very unique in their skills and lifestyle. They have their native villages located in Alaska and parts of Canada. The Clinket people were very complex in the way they organized themselves. They were put into clans based on wealth, character, and ancestors. The Clinket tribe was very well known for several things. Their totem poles, potlatches, ceremonies, but especially their fishing and hunting skills. They had several unique ways to catch their food, yet despite how skilled they were at hunting, what many people admired was their respect for all life. The Clinket tribe believed everything was alive, every little thing has a spirit. The Clinket people believed that by wearing parts of an animal, that person could gain some of that animal's power and strength. The Clinkets were friendly. They rarely had conflicts, and everyone got along. Everything was great. It's disappointing to know that not everything lasts forever. The Clinket experienced Europeans for the first time in 1771 when two bullets of men were sent into Clinket country by Russian explorer Alexei Chirikov. However, both of these ships did not return. Besides the Battle of Sitka, contact between the Clinkets and Europeans after this time was limited until late 1800s. The Battle of Sitka began when casual trading between Russians and Clinkets became forceful. The Russians tried to colonize and control the Clinkets trade routes, and then they took their land without permission. The Clinkets fought back, and in 1802, they fought against the Russians to claim their right to land in Sitka, which the Russians had stolen. The Clinkets won the first battle, but then the Russians reclaimed the land of Sitka again. The Clinkets tried to resist their trade routes being utilized, but it was hard for them to defend themselves. The Russians not only claimed Clinket property, but they also brought diseases such as smallpox, influenza, tuberculosis, and many more. Between the years of 1836 and 1840, it's estimated that one half of the Clinket population died from these diseases. The years 1836 through 1840 brought even more than just diseases. It brought the arrival of the Americans. The Americans were seeking gold, and since the Clinket population were depleted from diseases, they easily gained control of the land and the remaining people. In 1867, Americans officially became owner of the Clinket country when they bought it from the Russians in the 1867 Treaty of Purchase of Alaska. This change brought even more hardships to the already depressed Clinkets. The new owners of the Clinket country brought along changes that the Clinket people were not happy about, such as abolishing slavery. It might be surprising to some that the Clinkets believed in slavery, but in fact, they were avid believers. The Clinkets believed that a person's wealth could be determined by the number of slaves they had, and they took slaves from locations such as Alus in the West, Athabascan tribes of the interior, and many other tribes on the Pacific coast stretching as far as California. The invasion of the Europeans not only took away the Clinket slaves, but it started to deteriorate them culturally. After arriving in Clinket territory, the Americans began gold mining at Wyndham Bay and set up missionary schools. These schools' purposes were to convert the Clinkets to European culture and demolish their traditions. The children in the missionary schools were taught English and also to forget their Clinket heritage. The main lesson of the missionary schools were that anything Clinket-related wasn't accepted by society.
Later on in time, when the settlements Jonu in 1880 and Ketchikan in 1888 arrived, they started to immerse themselves in the clinket trade and the economic system changed drastically. This is because there is now a mixed cash substance economy, which was the opposite of what the clinkets were used to in their traditional trade. Between the years of 1886 to 1895, the clinkets also started to differ in their religious beliefs. The clinkets were still suffering with old diseases such as smallpox, so they decided to convert to the religion the Europeans were practicing in hopes to gain healing power. This new religion was Orthodox Christianity. The new religion affected a lot of things in the culture. The Klinkets used to paint a lot and pierce and tattoo each other, but now that is saved solely for ceremonies. Only a few ceremonies are still allowed for religious reasons, like potlatches and the traditional burial practices. However, with the burial practices, they now bury their dead instead of cremating them. Klinkets used to cremate their dead to promise them a warm and comfortable life in their afterlife, but that is no longer. Although the Klinkets had no choice but to accept change in some of their past beliefs and practices, such as religion, language, and economic structure, they still remained culturally intact. The Klinkets still had very festive potlatches, which had always been very important to them, as well as their very detailed and creative totem poles, which they used to express various events in life. They continued to fish and hunt the way they used to, and still believe in using the water for transportation. Their houses were still wooden buildings, and the Clinkets actually denied the Europeans canvas tents with wood stoves. The Clinkets also still have their various clans and their arranged marriages between these clans. However, now some marriages are arranged with Europeans. The Europeans may have intruded on the Clinkets way of life, but despite the few changes that they have been forced to adapt to, their culture and tribe still continues to remain strong. No matter what the outsiders may try to do, Nobody will ever be able to contain the spirit that runs freely through the people of the Clinket tribe.